Good morning, everyone. Good morning. All glory, laud, and honor to the Redeemer King. Uh, that is our our journey this morning on this happy Palm Sunday. So this morning, I want to uh, and I want to welcome each one of you that are coming in. Uh, one of the advantages of of um, of worshiping online is that uh, you can always mute me if you need to go get a cup of coffee or whatever. But you can also uh, continue chat with one another uh, through this, and I want to I want to encourage you to if uh, if you are seeing people that you haven't seen in a while, uh, come into the chat, please. Uh, Please check on each other. Please, uh, please cut, uh, touch base. Uh, please, uh, you know, uh, make fun of whatever I'm saying. Whatever it is that uh, that uh, the Spirit calls for you to do this day, uh, please, um, you know, that part of our jo our joining together in our journeying together is our coming together in fellowship and connection. So thank you. Good morning. Good morning, everyone, as as uh, as I see you come in. It is a joy to see you. Uh, a few announcements this morning. Um, we have uh, our schedule for Holy Week has, has been set and it has been laid out. Uh, it is pinned on the top of our Facebook page if you want to uh, to see that. Um, it is also in the uh, it has also been emailed out. If you would like to get it an email so that you can have links, uh, just message us uh, here and we'll make sure that you get that. Um, so please uh, come and be uh be a part of our events this week uh you can do it in your you can do it in your jimmy jams i mean that's the best part you can be in your pjs and and uh and uh still come and worship with us uh um, we are going to be using um, not just this platform, but we'll also be using Zoom a few times this week. So uh, if you uh, if you need help with that or any of that, or you know somebody in the church that would like to be connected to our online worship but feel a little intimidated by it, please get in touch with us, uh, either myself or Yvette in the office, and we can help with that. Uh, um, I, I believe if if you've got a will to to get connected, we can we can talk you through getting there. So I'm I'm quite convinced of that. Uh, so we come this morning uh, on this Palm Sunday, on this Sunday that is uh, is about Jesus entering Jerusalem. That he has uh, he has uh, that great command of having walked steadfastly towards the city, and he comes now to to enter in, enter in in glory, enter in in praise, enter in surrounded by crowds uh, as the prophet from Nazareth uh, and many proclaiming him the Messiah. So it is a, a, the, a high day in the beginning of the journey uh, to which ultimately is dinner with his friends and betrayal by those who love him and crucifixion, death, and on the third day, resurrection. This is, the, this is the greatest story ever told, friends. And we get to live it out this week on our, uh, in our digital world. So um, I, am, I am seeing so many fun names coming in. Good morning, Bob. It is great to see you and that you are with us this morning. Uh, we, so we come um, this morning... If you haven't seen the bulletin either, that has been emailed out. is also on the on our Facebook page. If you need a copy of that, um, if to, to, you might worship along with us. Um, and so, to begin our worship, we will we uh, we will begin by uh, um, lighting our candles, lighting our our uh, our light. And uh, this we have, uh, you know, we are. Um, to, for the safety and for for goodness, we are uh, in the midst of uh, we are uh, have brought um, worship to the living room. So here we are, and uh, so we we th in these days uh, are not lighting the candle of the two candles of the Son of Man and the Son of God, but we are lighting the the we are lighting a lamp. And so in that we, uh, as the psalmist tells us, the lamp. The word is a lamp unto our feet and a light to our path. And so we come to, to journey on this path uh, that uh, we might uh, walk together a while, even if it is uh, six feet apart. So, uh, so come, let's 
begin our worship. It is this is going to be our theme song for the day, uh, and as we as we work through it, so you will hear it a few times as we worship, and we uh, we later I will give you a warning. We later will get an opportunity to sing it, uh, and so um, and I if you are if if we are we might sit. Uh, uh, in our Jimmy Jams and and stand in our living rooms and proclaim the glory of this day, uh, I can think of no greater and more wonderful thing. So come, let us begin our worship. In, in last note, we as we begin our worship, we come to, uh, I have with us the, uh, a cross made from the palms of last year, so that we may, while we may not have palms, although palms are available, there are palms on the front door of the church, uh, that if you find yourself in Fall River and want to swing by the church, there are palms there outside at the front door. But these palms, that reminds us of the palms, and also... Uh, if you've noticed, there is greenery back here. Uh, at when the when the when New Englanders began to actually decorate for Palm Sunday, they didn't. The Congregationalists didn't always do that. But when they began to, uh, it was uh, long before there were they had access to palms, and so uh, it was traditional that they would begin uh, to decorate their homes with evergreen, as they did in the Christmas tide. And so uh, we come uh, to offer the greenery. Uh, that is this Palm Sunday. And uh, so come, let us begin at our worship and our call to worship. Uh, if you have it, terrific. If you do, I encourage you to, uh, to respond at the, at the time. If not, uh, come and, and let it wash over you and hear these words. As we are called into worship today, it is sobering to remember that when God appeared on earth in the person of Jesus, most of the world did not recognize him and therefore did not worship him. Today we ask for faith that we will open our eyes to see Jesus for who he is, that we might worship him in truth. People of God, behold and see your God. We open our eyes to see his glory. We open our ears to hear his wisdom. We open our hands to offer him gifts. We open our mouths to sing his praise. We open our hearts to offer him our love. He is our Lord. And I invite you to our unison prayer and the Lord's Prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, on this day you received the worship of those who hailed you as their king. Accept our praise and be with us this day in our worship and love, and grant that we who now come to our lips may never fail to trust you with our lives as we pray together the prayer you have taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And deliver us not from temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. 
We have uh, a children's message this morning, and this actually is a request uh, um, that I we, I I was uh, I heard from Neela this week, uh, and Neela had a question, and I wanted to answer her question here because it's such a great question that uh, and so her. Uh, her question was, um, she looked at her mom this week and said, Mom, why did God send the virus? Hmm, what a good question, huh? And I know other people have thought that too. So that's the first thing I want to do, say, Neela, is that it's an awesome question. It's really a good, it's good to ask these things to try and figure out what's going on and where is God in things. But what I would say, and what I want to say, is that that uh, I have this morning uh, a uh, something to to keep to wet my whistle, and so I'll have a little drink every once in a while to be able to kind of keep myself uh, keep myself going. But you know, and sometimes you do too. You'll have like a cup of milk or something like that, and you know what? Sometimes we spill them. Sometimes we make spills. We live in a world where there's things spill. We do. We live in a world where sometimes things happen. There's spills that happen in our house that we don't control or just accidents that take place. And so when we think about whether God sent the virus, what I would say is God didn't send the virus. It, in the, things happen in the world and sometimes things even like viruses happen. But what God does is God is the one who helps us clean them up. God is the one who helps us restore the things that are beautiful and good. God is the one that helps things come together again. God is the one that sustains us in our hearts when we're all discouraged about, about the spills that we've made. That, that All of these things are ways in which God comes to us to sustain us in the world where sometimes crazy things happen even like viruses breaking out. So I want you to remember, Jesus didn't send a virus to you, to the world. Jesus is the one that's helping us heal from the virus. Jesus is the one that's helping us hold together the world. Jesus is the one that is sustaining us and keeping us and giving us all the things and the people who love us around us to hold us together in it. That is what God is inviting us to. So that is my that so that's my answer. I hope you and I hope all of you will talk to your parents about it this week. I hope you'll ask about about what you think about it because it is one of the really important questions about where God is in these things that happen and where God is in this virus and all the things that are going on. All right, let's say a blessing. Dear Lord, bless these children and bless their inquiries. Bless the messes that they will make in their life and bless the restoration and the love and the regeneration that you have for them and that they may know there is no mess so big, there is no virus so worrisome that you cannot sustain and hold and offer us grace and healing through it. Lord, we pray this in your name and let the church say, Amen. Amen. Come on, blow it up, blow it up, come on. All right. We come now to our opportunity to share joys and concerns. So I want to, uh, I, I want to invite us to uh, to offer what um, what uh, what what would we pray for? There are so many things to pray for in these days. What uh, what would you offer in prayer? What has been on your heart in these days? What has been the thing that uh, that um, that you've carried this week? Not all the things, but just the things that that God has spoken to you of. So come, what what is it that we would that we would uh, we would offer this morning in our prayers? Those who are truly isolated, who aren't in the house with their family and friends. And... We will pray for the isolated. That is a great prayer. There is so there are many people. Who are lonely? Thank you. Yes, those who are struggling and isolated, that is. Please, faith over fear. We will pray for our faith to be strengthened. Yes. 
other prayers this morning. What are your prayers? I'm watching the chat. Prayer for Dave Costa. Absolutely. That he may know healing. Totally. Seniors and the elderly, thank you. That we might remember those most, most, vulner, most vulnerable right now. Prayers for those who are essential and have to go out. Essential workers. Prayers for our children and that they may know normalcy. Thank you. Other prayers this morning. All right. Bob's return to work. We will pray for Bob. Yes. Thank you. First responders, thank you. Yes, and docs and nurses, those who are on the front line of caring. We will absolutely pray for those, for them. And all those in the hospitals, thank you. Prayers that we will, that this will come to an end. Yes. Yes, we will continue to say prayers. Prayers for our doctors and nurses. Absolutely. For all of those who are caretakers. Other prayers this morning. Yeah, for those who are passing from this life to the next. Thank you, Deb. Thank you. Passing this life to next. That the Lord's angels may attend them. Prayers for me. I will say I will say prayers for all pastors out there these days. We uh it is a it, it is a uh, uh like so many people uh, we are all seeking to, to find the best way to support and to walk and to work through this. And uh, all of my peers desperately need your prayers, for sure. And me too. Other prayers this morning? Yes. The depressed and the isolated that we all get through. Yes. Thank you. All right, let us go to our God in prayer this morning. Lord, this Palm Sunday, you have revealed yourself as a king. You revealed yourself as the one, one true object of worship in this whole world, where all the things that, are, uh, that swirl around us, that look for our attention and look for our being, that you are the height of heights. You are the, the highest thing in all being. That you are the thing that is that has uh, brought us, each one of us, to know grace and love and peace. You're the, the deliverer of all good things that come from you. And so we ask in this hour, when I, when our society is stressed, when we are stressed, when we we come in isolation and worry, when we come in desperation and pain, when we come in wondering and uncertainty of what will come, we we come to you, and we offer our prayers, and we know that your spirit may go to work on them, and that our that that in our praying, it doesn't mean we get our way but it means that we ally with you in the highest and most perfect good that can come. And so we pray for David Costa in these days that he may know your healing, that in this hour as he lays in bed and as those who care for him, they may know the great wisdom of the way in which to heal him and to care for him, and that, his, that you may bulwark his body and his strength to fight off that which afflicts him. Lord, for all of those who have lost a, 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 their sense of meaning and their sense of employment in these days, the way that, that not only they make their wage, but they find their purpose, 
that we, you may know that that they are larger than what they do that and that they are loved and beautiful in your sight just because of who they are not because of what they do lord we ask for the for that you reach out to those who are isolated in this hour that you may that they may know your grace and your peace that uh, that they may know they are not separated and not alone let your angels move those who are around them to pick up a phone and to to touch out so that to reach out so that connection might be found even for the most isolated lord we ask for for that you strengthen our faith in these days that we might that we might dig deeper and know that uh, in our own souls that we might drink from the fresh water that is that that sustains us that comes from you Lord, for those who are the most vulnerable in these days, for the seniors and the elderly, we ask your grace surround them. Let them know the, the wisdom and the strength that comes from years long lived and let, them, and let them know that they are beloved in your sight. Lord, for those who are, uh, who, who are in the world as essential workers, for those who, are, who keep the lights on and keep the, keep the trucks moving, we ask that your, your traveling mercies go with each one of them, that they may know your love and sustaining grace in these hours. And Lord, for our children, that your love may be upon them as well, and that in it, and in all of this, they may not, uh, they may not, su they may not suffer, and they may not know uh, no lack, but they may be grow in wisdom in in the in the facing of these days. Lord, we ask for your prayers of protection and love and grace upon Bob Costa as he returns to work and service uh, to a city that most desperately needs him right now, and so uh, that your grace might go with him, and that your your uh, your protecting angels may uh, may surround him, Lord. For those who are working in healing services, and those who are doctors and nurses, uh, for all those in the hospitals, for those who who are washing beds and providing meals, for all of those who are who are caring for the sick, let them know the joy and the protection of what it is to live out your high calling of caring for those and the least of these. And Lord, for those at the at the end of life, for whom they will transition from this life to the next, let your special angels draw close to them that will welcome them home and let them know that they are that they are well provided for as they waken to the grand party that is prepared for them as they step through the threshold. Lord, we ask for your prayers for the for pastors and for churches around the country that as they struggle on this morning to to meet and to gather and to sustain one not one another that your love and your grace might be upon them and that the, that that uh, the the power of what happens in these gatherings and and which is to come into your presence may be made manifest and that you might sustain your servants in these days. And Lord, we ask that all of us might find our way through this. Whatever wisdom it is we need, whatever encouragement, whatever it is we need, give us ears to hear and eyes to see it. Give, give us your, your grace in the time and the day that you appointed. And let, it, let us know that, that your being and your love is there for us. Lord, in all these prayers, there are many that remain in our hearts and our minds. And so we offer them to you in this moment of silence. Lord, in all these prayers on this Palm Sunday, let us rejoice with you in their hearing. Let us rejoice in, with you in, that, in, in what you bring back to us in our praying them. And let us rejoice in you in a world which we know you are king, in which you are, are in charge, in which you know us as your children, and we know you as our God. We pray this in your name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.
we come now to our to our readings. Uh, this the, our first reading this morning is from Isaiah, and uh, uh, Isaiah has uh, these words to say to us this morning. Declare and present your case. Let them take counsel together. Who told this long ago? Who declared it of old? Was it not I, the Lord? There is no other God besides me, a righteous God and a Savior. There is no one besides me. Turn to me and be saved, all the ends of the earth, for I am God and there is no other. By myself I have sworn from my mouth has gone forth in righteousness, a word that shall not return. To me every knee shall bow and every tongue shall swear. Only in the Lord shall I be said of me, are righteousness and strength. All who were incensed against him shall come to him and be ashamed. In the Lord all the offspring of Israel shall triumph and glory. And from the gospel lesson. This is Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem. When they come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, the Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughters of Zion, look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David! Blessed is he, the one who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest heaven! And he then entered Jerusalem. The whole cry was in turmoil, asking, the whole the whole city was in turmoil asking who is this and the crowds were saying this is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee Hosanna in the highest Isaiah starts out this morning by offering us this this very clear injunction. Turn to me and be saved at the ends of the at the ends of the earth, for I am God and there is no other. When we talk about the when we talk about truth claims, we talk about bold statements, Isaiah is laying it down. Like when Jesus was looking for who would deliver him into the holy city, he's he picks a donkey. He doesn't pick a chorus of angels. He doesn't pick a stallion. He doesn't pick a chariot. He picks a donkey. I am God and there is no other on my donkey. It doesn't really flow, does it? That, uh, But Israel was wrestling with what the people of Jesus of that day were wrestling with. It's the same question. And I think it's the question that we're wrestling with this Palm Sunday too. And it's a question of, who do you trust? Who do you trust? Like, where do you put your trust? Like, do we, are we, are we trusting the government to have the situation in which we find ourselves? 
in? Do we have them? Do they think they have the answers? Do we trust the medical professionals that they have the answers? The epidemiologists, the, those folks. Do we, do we trust that, that our families will hold us together and keep us, and keep us safe? Do we trust that the, that, uh, that the, the, the workers of the cities, that the, the firemen, the, 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 uh, the, the, the policemen, the, the, do we trust they will hold it all together? Do we, in this time when things are getting, the wheels on the bus are getting a little rattly, what are we putting our trust in? And the people of Israel were in the same boat. The, 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 army, of, the army of Babylon was bearing down on them. And who is it that they could trust? Will they trust in God or will they, do they need to do something else? Put their trust in a king, put their trust in somebody else, put their trust in another God. Where do they put their trust? And, and the prophet Isaiah's answer is right spot on. It says, I am God and there is no other. Hands down. And here's Jesus comes along. And it's the same question that, that the, uh, the, uh, the, the first century Jews are in. Who do we trust? Do we put our trust in the priests? Because they seem to be working with the Romans. Do we put our trust in the Romans? Because they seem to beat us up every chance we get. Do we put our trust in the revolutionaries who are working to rebel against the Romans? Because they seem like they're, they're out to get us. Do we put our trust in prophets? You know, again, remember, Jesus wasn't the only prophet running around. There were tons of prophets running around in this age. That's why they... That's why they have this identity for Jesus. They say Jesus, the the guy from Nazareth, because there very well could have been another Jesus running around. So like, oh, I'm I'm Jesus from Philadelphia or whatever. You know that that we are that there there are these nations that there were other prophets running around. Do we put our trust in the prophets? Where, where do we place our trust? And for the for for many of us, there's this, this is a real question we're working out right now. This is a real sense of like, man, I, I don't know. I don't know what they're telling me. They're, I don't know if what they're telling me so. I don't know if this is this is the case. And we're, we're all wrestling through these doubts. And yet here's Jesus. He comes along. And he's, and even though we're all wrestling this down, he is, says, I am God and there is no other and places himself on a donkey. And so I want to spend... Pretty much the rest of our time talking about donkeys because they're awesome. Uh, part of this, uh, I am indebted to uh, my to, indebted to uh, to Len Sweet for some of this thought. He is uh, he's he's uh, he is uh, incredibly wise on on donkeys well, and many other things too. But and I also dedicate this to to my friend uh, uh, Robin Carden, whose whose great dream is. To, uh, uh, to own a donkey and she was actually talking to her 15 year old son the other day and says gosh I just can't wait to get a donkey she wants a donkey for her farm and her son's and her son said mom why don't why don't you get a donkey and she says you know well you're 15 and you're only going to be here for a few other for a few more years and so I'd rather spend my time with you than get a donkey and to which her son replied get the donkey now mom uh so anyway the, the donkey donkeys aren't always blessings that way but uh why is why a donkey and it's, this isn't just now it's not just enough to say that oh it's because there was a prophecy and Jesus needed to check the block uh the, on the on the donkey like we didn't it, it's not that the the donkey has deep symbolism within the within the uh um uh the Israelite world and the 12 tribes and and I want you to, and I it's my hope that you'll come away from the rest of this trusting your donkey because you see you say oh I don't I don't have a donkey I mean Avi's saying that she has they've got a sweet donkey at the farm but I mean I, I imagine most of you are looking around the, the living room and you don't see a donkey there if you do call me because I want to come over but uh when you know well we can do that but that we can that that uh, but that this notion that there is in us uh, these twelve tribes that the twelve tribes are not just are, are not just fixtures out there of of ways of being you see because each one of the twelve tribes of Israel have a job 
And they're very much kind of like the different jobs that we have and the different identities that we have through the course of our day and the different parts of our own self that we, uh, that we constellate to bring together. You know, there's, there is, uh, there's, there's the tribe of Gad, which is the, the warrior tribe, and sometimes we need to be warriors. They're, they're almost archetypal kind of things that these ways in which uh, the, these, uh, these tribes constellate. Now, the tribe of the donkey is the tribe of Issachar. Now, the Issacharians are weird. Because the Issacharians, are, they're not busy uh, tending, the, tending the temple. They're not busy doing business like Zebulon. They're, the, the tribe of Issachar, the, the donkey tribe, are the people who can see the signs, who can see the signs and know what to do about them. Think about that. They see the signs of the age and they know what to do about them. Wouldn't it be great? To like see the signs of this age and to know what to do about them. And I'm going to, so I want to give us some lessons from the donkey right now so that you can trust your donkey. Uh, and if you're, if you're looking for a, if you're looking for, a, for an analogy here, like I, there's a, there's a book I've read called uh, um, The Gift of Fear. And, and Isakarians aren't necessarily fearful, but The Gift of Fear is this long book. It's a big book uh, that it was written by a security expert about our inner knowing about what we should be afraid of. And he says, if you fight, figure out the moments that you should be afraid, you, then you, all the other moments you can be fearless because you know there isn't actually physical violence coming your way. It is one of the, I'd say it's one of the five books that changed my life. And it's not a, it's not a particularly spiritual book, but it talks about inner knowing. It talks about seeing the signs of where you are, of what's going on around you, and not backing down from those. Seeing them unblemished, of, well, this is what's going on, accepting the truth of our situation, and then living into that, and then knowing what to do about it. Those are the, is, that's a, that, and I, I, I think the, I think the, if the, if the Isakarians wrote a book uh, about, um, about dealing with um, um, violence, it might be, the gift of fear, because it's this way. And so my suggestion to you is there's, you, you've got your inner donkey, and you need to listen to your donkey, because your donkey's smarter than you are in times like these. Your donkey knows what to do, and, and can recognize what's going on, and knows what to do. So I want you to, to trust your donkey. Okay, what does that mean, trust my donkey? Uh, the first thing about donkeys is if, and, and anybody, I've talked with a number of people who've, who've gone down the, down the, uh, trails of the Grand Canyon that, and they've taken the donkey trip that goes down there and that, and that they, and they ride the donkey and they they use donkeys on that trail because donkeys are, are incredibly sure footed. And donkeys also won't put themselves in, in danger. But we'll talk about that in a minute. That donkeys actually are, well, they're, they're what's called edge walkers because you've got the whole trail and then you've got, and you've got the precipice here and the donkey is right up against the precipice because the donkey wants to be able to see where the edge is. It's really important. You, you can keep guiding the donkey towards the cliff wall, but it will always keep coming back to the edge because the donkey knows that the safest place to be is to be able to see the signs, to see what's going on, to see where the edge is. And if I know where the edge is, if I'm on the edge, if I'm, if I'm, if I'm being brutally honest with myself about what the truth of what's going on is right now, if I'm walking that line, I'm walking that edge, and I'm taking in all that information, I will know what to do as a good donkey. Like, that's the gift of a donkey. That, that, that's one of the first gifts of a donkey, is that they know they, they're edge walkers. And that I think in these days, we, have, we, we, we as people of faith really need to embrace our inner donkey and be edge walkers. Like really have eyes to see and ears to hear what's going on. Not necessarily listen to what everybody's saying to us. Not listen to every Facebook post. Holy smokes. If you're trying to discern what is true in the world by looking at all the different things that every third person on Facebook is now an epidemiologist, we will, it, it is baffling the amount of stuff that is out there. And it's quite, quite literally baffling. 
but that we might have eyes to see and be edge walkers because that's actually the mo the safest place to be because we'll know what to do when we as we as we navigate the edge of what's coming up the second thing about donkeys is that donkeys have a reputation for being stubborn you probably know that but they're not stubborn they're not really stubborn that's not really the truth about donkeys what the truth about donkeys is is that they are actually uh, have a great sense of self-preservation that in the in their in their world they uh, they um, in, in their world they will not put themselves in peril and that's why if you're for instance at a riverbank or you're on a battlefield nobody rides a donkey into battle because a donkey won't go into battle because it's like there's guys up there with pointy things I'm not going there like that's dumb a horse will go into battle a horse a, a horse will look at the edge of a stream and look across the stream and say and you say give you spur the horse it will go across the stream even if it knows it doesn't have the strength to make it across and you and the horse will you and your horse will drown it will still say okay boss here we go donkeys won't donkeys won't your inner knowing your inner knowing you've got you've got with your eyes to see on the edge and your ears to hear on the, on the space you've got an inner knowing you've got you've got you can trust your donkey you can trust your donkey with your life. You can trust your donkey with your life. You can trust what you know on, the, on, on your inner knowing about the signs that you see. Because it's my conviction that, that if you, if, particularly if you look at this entry of Jesus into Jerusalem, if you look at this declaration of Isaiah in, uh, in the 45th chapter, there is no question. Jesus is at the point where Jesus is saying, this is who I am. God is at the point of saying, this is who I am. I am revealing myself to you. I am king of the universe. There is, I am God and there is no other. And that when we start in that relationship, and our donkey is the one that can see the signs of that relationship. Have you ever been in a place of like praying for something or really not knowing what to do about something, really not knowing what, what, what to come and to begin to see signs that kind of pop out of your life, whether it's a, whether it's a, a, a song that comes on, whether it's a, a, a random phone call, whether it's a moment that there is this way in which the, the world is conspiring for you and with you, like that notion that, that there's this pronoia, as I've talked about before. I think this is, we are living in an age of terrific need for pronoia. You know, there's plenty of paranoia out there. Pronoia is the idea that the world is actually out, to, out for you, is out working to bring you goodness. Paranoia is the world is out to get you. This pronoia is that the world is at working for you. And I'm not saying the world is, but I know that the one who made you is. And that your donkey can see that. Your inner knowing. Your inner knowing. Your inner being. Your inner way that will carry you from the through the sheep's gate into the center of the holy place. That is the donkey's work. That's its job. And the whole way, what is the crowd calling? This whole journey of the donkey and the symbol of the tribe of Issachar that who can read the signs and knows what to do about them that is on the edge that knows with eyes to see and ears to hear what to do all of that what is the crowd calling Hosanna Hosanna in the highest that seems like a praise word, right? We seem to, we have used that as a praise, we've come to use that as a praise word. Hosanna, Hosanna. Like, Hosanna in the first century meant save us. And it's this thing you, if you were drowning, Hosanna would be the word that you cried out. That would, it's that level of peril. That it is, it is this point at which when, the, when Jesus enters on the donkey, again, 
Why the donkey? Because you can trust your life to a donkey. And that the palm fronds come down and lay on, on the road, that the cloaks are spread out so that even the donkey doesn't muddy its feet, that when we attend to the donkey, when we tend to our inner knowing, when we attend to our being, we understand we can trust the donkey in the, when the voices around us are crying, save us, save us. Friends, this is, we are in an age of fear and we are in, a wor in an age of worry. But all glory, laud, and honor to the Redeemer King. That's the invitation of the donkey, is how we give all glory, laud, and honor, is how we give our love and our grace and our being, and we give our, the expression of our days we, by listening to our, to our donkey, by listening to that which carries us into the grace and the peace and the, and, the, and the center of the holy city. So I want to wrap up our time this morning by, uh, by giving us the opportunity to sing in this, in this, uh, sing this hymn. Uh, you know, I don't know about you, but, uh, and I don't know if you've got it in you, but I'm going to, I want to invite you to the chance to sing I want to invite you to the chance to to gather with uh, with whoever's there, and if no one is there, to simply come and belt it out. Uh, that if, you know that uh, you might be able to know and to give uh, all glory, laud, and honor to the Redeemer King. All glory, laud, and honor to the donkey that carries him, to the donkey that works within you, to your own donkey that you can trust as it as it walks towards goodness and this and the center of being so i'm I want to invite you so one of the big things that's been going on in facebook has been quarantine karaoke all right friends this is your chance for quarantine karaoke right here that we might offer up our chance to sing. Okay. 
welcome, they sang their hymns of praise. To Thee now, Lord, this altar, our melody we raise. O glory, Lord, and honor to Thee, Redeemer King, to whom the lips of children made sweet hosannas ring. Of this accept their praises, accept the prayers we bring, who in all good delightest, thou good and gracious King. Of glory, Lord, and honor to thee, Redeemer King, to whom the lips of children made sweet hosannas That uh, I hope you took the chance. If not, you got a you got uh, Chris and I belting it out for you anyway. But uh, uh, it is I I hope you took the chance to to dare to to dare to sing to dare to to to, to stand in your Jimmy Jams and proclaim God's love to the world. Uh, all glory, laud, and honor to the Redeemer King, who has given us all an inner knowing, who has given us all the inner donkey that that will take us to the holy spirit center if we uh but spend some time in relationship with the one who made us and uh listen to its nudgings on the edge all right that's our message for today i am hopeful uh we i want to talk a little bit about offering that if uh if you want if you'd like to contribute to the church if you go to our web page uh, FCCFallRiver.com in the upper right corner. There's a donate button. Uh, please uh, and please join. Uh, uh, you can uh, make a pledge there through Tidely, or you can mail your pledge to the to the church office. That's great. Uh, but as we talk about offering, I want to think about what uh, what uh, what we offer our donkey this week. Uh, that uh, donkeys, if you remember the text, uh, you know they don't live on nothing. And they uh, they come from somewhere that they actually that the that Jesus sends the disciples out to seek out the donkey uh, and the do and uh, and uh, in in Jesus's need and so how are we going to feed our donkey this week What will we offer ourselves and offer our own inner knowing How will will we take some time and spend some time with Jesus Will we spend some time with the one who made us? Will we spend some time in reflection, paying attention to what our eyes tell us and what our ears tell us, not to what little boxes tell us, not to what screens tell us, not to not to the to the things around us, but that we listen to the to the to our immediate world. In our immediate world, the things the donkey is trying to our our donkey's trying to tell us is, are often the needs and the wants of the world that are right around us that we can't see. And so uh, what, so my, my, uh, my invitation for you this week when it comes to offering is that we might uh, listen well and to hear well and tend well to our donkey. And so then in it, we might, uh, we might be able to, uh, to trust our donkey because we can. Uh, that's my hope for all of you in these days. Amen. This uh this concludes our service. So uh, we're we're going to I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to land it here. Uh so uh, I am so glad that you are all here that you've been with us. Uh this will be on the on our Facebook page. So uh if it's an encouragement to you, if it's an encouragement to others, uh please um, please check out our events that we'll have the, through the course of the week. Um, it has been a joy gathering at 11:11. I hope you'll you'll make it there with us as well. In all of these days, uh, it's my hope that uh, that goodness and grace and peace go with you, uh, that your heart may be at peace uh, because you can trust your donkey. So, so go forward this day 
and know that God is with you. God is before you. God is behind you. God is to the left of you and to the right of you. God is above you and below you. And that God's love for you is immeasurable. And that it shines through you in the world and in their delight. And that in your being and in your listening and watching to all that is, that you may go forward and trust your donkey. And that in it, you may bring Jesus to the world. Amen. Thank you, everyone, for being here. It is a true joy to worship with you. I, I have to say, I miss our space. Man, I'm, it's breaking my heart that we are not gathered. I miss your faces that we might not be able to see each other and greet one another. I miss each of you. Uh, and yet, in these moments, it is our chance that we might gather uh, in this way. And so I have uh, your, little, uh, your little avatars and your little digital selves over there uh, that, uh, that do offer me encouragement as well. Uh, so, uh, so thank you, everybody, for coming out at this morning and being with us at First Congregational Church in Fall River. Thanks.